All right, my friends, today we're going to be going over how to attach a trailing effect to any particle system that you have, much in the same way that I have uh, these three uh, trailing effects uh, on these particle systems here to create this sort of magical trail, starry kind of trail effect. Uh, if you're brand new to Niagara, you will need to enable it first before we get going. So let's do that real quick. You're just going to pop up to the edit menu, go to plugins, VFX, and you should enable this Niagara. You can enable Niagara and Extras as well, and then the uh, editor will restart. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new folder, and I'm going to call this P Systems. And inside of that folder, I'm going to create a new Niagara emitter. And that Niagara emitter, um, we're going to do this omnidirectional burst to show off. And we're going to call this PEN for Particle Emitter Niagara. And we're going to call this lead. This will be our lead particles that we're going to attach the trail to. Open that one up. Bring it on in. We're not going to change a whole lot in here. Uh, one thing I do want to do is just delete this gravity. There we go. We just kind of want to make this burst out, kind of like a firework. That's what we're, what we're going for here. And let's see. Uh, I definitely want to change this loop duration to something like three seconds. And I want this to loop infinitely to show you guys as well. So I want to change this max loop count uh, to zero. I'm going to go ahead and change my little timeline here so it loops a little more frequently. Let's see. There we go. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Oh, we're stopping. There we go. Click the wrong button there. And the big thing here. Oh, I broke my emitter, it looks like. There we go. So let me bring this up here just to sort of get it, get it rocking and rolling. There we go. Now we're all squared away. Uh, the big thing here is we're going to need to have our lead particles generate a location event and some other attributes as well that we're going to use to attach to our ribbons uh, or to whatever uh, whatever other emitter that you want to have attached to your lead uh, particles. And to do that, it's real simple. In your particle spawn, you're going to click on this add new module. You're going to click on events. Where's events at? Oh, I was up there in particle spawn. Need to go to particle update and go to events. And we're going to generate a location event. That's the one we want right there. We're not going to see anything change. But what this is basically doing here is if we expand this out, it's going to send the particle position from uh, this lead particles position. It's also going to send its velocity. It's going to send a random float its ID and its normalized age. So it's gonna like package all this stuff together and then just and just have it out there in the world for something else to grab. And then we're gonna make a ribbon emitter that is just going to listen in for a location event and do a bunch of stuff based on that. And I think that's all that we need for this guy right here, really simple stuff. So we're gonna uh, compile, apply and save. Let's close that out. And we're going to make a new emitter. This is going to be our trails emitter. And we're going to start with this simple sprite burst, I think will be the simplest one to go to go about. And we're going to call this PEN trails. We'll open that one up. we got just a little basic sprite going on here. I'm going to right click up top, uh, collapse to headers to kind of just minimize everything so I know what I'm looking at. Uh, we don't want to render any sprites. We want to render ribbons. So that's... Uh, we want to just trash can this uh, sprite render properties and add a new renderer called the ribbon renderer properties. And the material that we're going to give this is the default ribbon material. There it is. Nothing too fancy going on there. It's just going to give us something to look at, uh, basically. And so it's really important that if you're having emitters spawn off of another emitter's actions, like what we're going to be doing here, that you want to make sure that you don't have any like spawning behavior inside of the emitter. I've had some issues where I've had this in the emitter, but I've had it checked like off here, like just unchecking it. 
and it still just didn't work all that well. And I find that like the surefire way to go about it is just to delete the module. All right, so we're not gonna change a whole lot in here, but we do need to remove this sprite size. So in our particle spawn set variables and particle uh, sprite size, I'm just gonna click the little down arrow and click on remove. I'm just gonna get rid of that. And what we need to add here is the ribbon width. So I click the little down arrow on the set variables, add variable, and ribbon width. And we're gonna set this to something like four. Can't see anything right now because we're not spawning anything yet, but it, we can always change these values inside the system. So no big deal. And in our life cycle, we want the ribbons to spawn continuously. We don't want them to just spawn one time. So we're gonna set that to uh, zero. So it spawns infinitely or in a loop rather. And I believe our other system was also set to a loop duration of three seconds. So we'll, we'll set it there. And now, we need to go into the particle update, type in event. Oh, sorry. In the event handler, that's it. You want to click the plus to add a new module to our uh, event handler. And right now we can't select any incoming events because that is tied to the system. Right now the emitter is just off all by itself. It has no idea like, you know, what, uh, what any other events are because we're not part of the system. So we definitely want to change this execution mode from every particle to spawned particles. And we're going to set the spawn number to one. So we just want to spawn one ribbon and then have that ribbon do some stuff afterwards. And let's go ahead and add a new module to this. We're going to type in event. Now the important thing here is to have it also uh, receive a location event. So this is going to turn this emitter into a listener, essentially. It's going to listen in for a location event to happen. And it just so happens that our other emitter, our lead emitter, is generating a location event. And we can also uh, generate death events and collision events as well. And those are super fun to play around with. And I think this is all good here. I don't think we need to change anything. But if we do, we can always change it later. So we're gonna compile uh, and apply and save. So again, not really looking like a whole lot, but let's go ahead and put everything into a system and see how it all works out. All right, so let's go close that and go into the system. And I'm gonna create a new system from a set of selected emitters. And I'm gonna type in PEN lead. I'm gonna click it, click this little plus button here. I'm gonna type in trails. Click Trails, add it, click OK. And I'm going to call this PSN, um, we'll just call this like Burst or Firework. Let's call it Firework. Because it kind of looks like a firework when we're all done with it. You can see here, now we have both of our emitters in, in here. And we don't have any ribbons yet. And that's because under our Trails, we haven't selected this location event yet. So now we have this option available here. This lead particle is now generating this location event. So now we can listen in for that location event. But you can see we're still not getting anything. And that can be super frustrating. And it really frustrated me as well. Or, and if you're running different types of emitters, you might see your ribbons kind of go crazy. And that is because in your lead emitter, under your emitter lifecycle, I believe. No, it's under emitter properties you want to make sure that this checkbox is, is selected here. This requires persistent IDs. And you can see immediately, we're, we're already kind of working already. We got, we got ribbons attaching stuff. So, so what's going on here? Uh, I believe that the ribbons are needing a ID to attach themselves to because this location event, let me just show you here, this location event, this, uh, your lead particle is going to generate sort of this payload here. And it's also going to generate this ID as well. But if that ID ever changes, your ribbon doesn't know where to go. So it could just go in random, seemingly random locations, but it's trying to find the ID um, uh, of the payload so, so it can attach itself to. And if you maintain those IDs through the whole life cycle of your emitter, then the ribbons know consistently where to go. Hopefully that makes sense. So now we got something working, but we can already kind of see a little bit of a problem if you look closely. And I'm gonna scrub my timeline here. I'm gonna kind of come back. 
And I'm gonna click up here and go to orbit mode. Oh, by the way, if uh, you have like a, a different background here and you, and you want this black background, uh, you can come over to preview scene settings and uncheck this show environment. You may, it may look something like this. Just uncheck that and you should be good to go. And then I come up here to this top left and I turn off this orbit mode so I can hold down right click and I can move around and then use WASD to kind of look at my system. So you can see something weird going on here. You can see that there's this gap between our lead particle and our ribbon. So what's, what's happening? And effectively, the lead particle is generating a location event on, let's say, frame zero. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to broadcast out that, hey, here's my position, my velocity, uh, my ID, and all, all the stuff that you specify in your location event. And then on frame one, your ribbon event receives that information because it's listening. It's going to receive that information. It's then going to attach itself to all of those, you know, all those properties, and then it's going to render out. So your ribbon is effectively a frame-ish behind, depending on how fast your particles move. So if this was a particle system that moved very, very quickly, you're going to see some really funky sort of results. And how we can fix this is by changing this gap correction amount. And this is going to effectively jump ahead in time for us. So we can jump this head, let's say, by two frames. You can see here, ah, there we go. You can see there's really like no difference now between the sprite, uh, the lead particle, and the uh, the ribbon itself. So we can set this to maybe one. Let's find another particle. So we have a little bit of a gap there, so let's leave it at two. Now we'll zoom out here and hit play. Let's just take a look at it. Yeah, that looks really great. That looks really great now. So we have this uh, kind of like fireworky, bursty kind of thing going on. And you can attach any system that you want uh, to have it listen in on, on events. And you can have your lead uh, particles also generate any other kind of event. Well, at least there's two other kind of events anyway. You have a collision event, you have a death event. And if I minimize this here, that's how I got this system right here to work is that on death, we're spawning, uh, we're having these emitters, um, like that burst emitter and, or there's two burst emitters kind of going on here. Um, but they're just listening in for a death event of the particle. So we get a consistent spawn. Um, so we don't have to set like a bunch of emitters inside the sphere, for example, and have it just be a delay off of, um, you know, and sync up the delay to the end of the end of the particle and that sort of thing. So let me bring this back up. So we can now customize these ribbons uh, however we want. If we come over here to uh, the ribbons uh, particles and look at the color, you can just do a color from curve really quick. And let's see, let's just add a key here at zero and let's just make it I don't know this like this pink color there we go and I'm gonna set this to like a black there we go so you can really see that our ribbon trails are fading out and you're noticing here that it's fading it so on this side of the color is the back end of your trail so it's, it's kind of important to note that it's whatever is, because the uh, the ribbons are actually spawning up here at this, uh, uh, where your where your sprite is or wherever your lead particle is. So it can be a little little weird to wrap your head around, you know, if you do your colors or you're doing your scaling or anything like that. Uh, so in order to get more things attached to this, you can have uh, just another another like spike particle system. So as an example here, if we can see what's going on in here, we just have a ribbon attached and then we just have some uh, some sparkle, like a sparkle system pretty much uh, coming off of it. So let's just take a quick look inside. Where do I have it here? Particle systems, projectile, and if we show you can see here I'm generating a location event and I'm also generating a death event as well. And that's what this uh, pow and burst is is listening in for. Ooh, let me turn off my orbit mode here. Where did my, oh, there it goes. So now I can just pause this at a decent spot here. 
There we go, something like that. Um, so you can really see it here. So you can see that I have uh, these like little tiny sprites in uh, also listening in for the location of my lead uh, uh, projectile particle here. So my, my lead in this example would be the projectile particle. And then the sprite trail is simply just listening in, as you can see here, listening into this uh, location event and just doing just some normal basic stuff, like nothing too fancy. We're adding a little bit of velocity, a uh, little bit of uh, drag force just to kind of spread them out. We're mostly just messing with the color and that's about it. For the trail itself, uh, we're just messing with the color quite a bit. We have a pretty thick ribbon and we just have like a custom texture. And that's pretty much uh, all you really need to know to, to really get started on attaching ribbons onto any particle system that you want. You just have to make sure that your lead particle is generating events and that whatever uh, that you want listening in is set to receive those events. And I will warn you, if you start adding too many events uh, to one emitter, I have found that Niagara has crashed on me pretty consistently, especially with you have uh, receiving location events and death events at the same time. Um, so I'd be really wary uh, about that kind of stuff. So hopefully that stuff gets fixed. Uh, that's going to be it. I think that uh, that's all that we need to, to cover here. I think with uh, this little bit here that I showed you, you can replicate this exact thing that I have uh, I've made here. Um, again, the only thing we're doing is we're spawning a particle or we're attaching a ribbon to that particle and we're spawning some little uh, fun trails. And then on a death effect, uh, on a death event, rather, uh, we're just doing like those pows and those bursts and, um, you know, like those star bursts and that kind of thing. And that's it. That's 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 all that's really going on here. So if you want to go into real depth, uh, you can just let me know and maybe we'll, we'll kind of go through these emitters uh, step by step if that's something that you're interested in. But if not, uh, that, that's going to conclude it here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.